In business, we often ask this question: How much to order? New Swander model used in logistics to decide how many how many units of inventory to order when we have uncertain or stochastic demand. Stochastic demand means that it's hard to predict uh, some value in the future. So, new Swender model is about trade-off between stock out and overstock. When we order too little, then we would have shortage, low availability. This will make customers angry. And we could also have goodwill cost, which means loss of reputation and loss of future business. Also, some businesses could uh, in a f face stock out penalty when they have shortage. On the other side, if we order too much, then the business would have surplus inventory. There would be higher risk of spoilage and high inventory cost. At the end of the sales season, the business would have to get rid of overstock at discounted price. So, here is a typical situation for New Swender model. This is example of Newsboy. Newsboy every day buys newspapers from the local publisher at one dollar per unit wholesale price. Then the Newsboy sells those newspapers to local customers at two dollars per each paper. The problem is that it's hard to predict how many units the customers would buy today. So, for example, today customers bought four units of inventory, so we had four units of sales. There was no stock out and no overstock, and our revenue was eight dollars, and the total cost is four dollars. It means we got four dollars profit today, which is quite a good profit margin. Okay, situation was good today, but let's see what could happen the next day. This time, news vendor, as always, buys four papers from the supplier. But today is not like yesterday. Today only three units were sold, so we have one unit of overstock. And in this case, of course, our profit would be lower. Next day, again, order of four papers. And this time only one unit was sold. So this time our cost even exceeds our revenues. It means we have a loss. In some situations the demand could be higher than expected. For example today, uh, let's imagine one extra customer came from the other neighborhood and requested a paper. But we didn't expect that, so we ran out of stock. This made this uh, extra customer angry, but also we missed uh, sales opportunity. So despite good looking profit margin, actually today we could, we could earn even more. Let's summarize what sales we had in those four days. So again, our whole sole sale uh, price is one dollar and we sell the papers at full price of two dollars and any papers remaining at the end or overstock uh, cannot be sold at discounted price. So we, the overstock has to be discarded. It means zero salvage value. And the demand of buyers in, is unpredictable. Uh, it's on average three, but pl plus minus two. 
So our expected profit for all periods is simply average value. And in this case it's two dollars expected profit for every period. But what would happen if we ordered a little bit more, a little bit less than four papers? Would our results be better? Newswender model could help answer such question. I emphasize could because Newswender model doesn't give uh, perfect, precise answers on how much to order. It only suggests possible solutions. So, there are two solutions possible depending on newsboy target. First solution is easier. The business simply sets some target service level. It is a minimum level of customer demand that the business wants to satisfy. And our sales revenue also depends on it. For example, the newsboy could set a target service level of 80 customers. It would mean that the news vendor wants stock out to happen in no more than 20% of cases. Another possible solution is more complicated. It's called profit maximization target. And uh, this means that we pri prioritize uh, keeping costs minimum instead of uh, caring about uh, customer service level or revenue. Of course, most businesses care about profit very much, but there is problem with this target. In order to calculate optimal order size to maximize profit, we need a lot of accurate data to predict, pre to predict demand. But it's a big problem in real business, because good data is always uh, an issue to find. So, in real business, usually target service level is set. For example, retailers often set high service target level between 90 and 99 percent. If it's business to business relation, like uh, suppliers supplying to a retailer, then even 100 percent service level could be set. It would mean that no stock out would be allowed. Now let's come back to our main question. How many units of inventory to order? In order to calculate order size, we have to know demand distribution. And we can estimate demand distribution based on our historical demand data. This is information that we keep in our uh, database about past customer orders. This distribution uh, looks quite complicated for people who are not uh, very well familiar with statistics. But actually it's not so difficult. Uh, let's go back to our news Newsboy example. So, here is a basic distribution. It's called uniform. This demand distribution is, is typical when all demand values have more or less equal chance of happening. For example, if in 100 days Newsboy could sell one, two, three or four papers every day and any of those demand values would have equal chance of happening, then the demand distribution would look like this. This is a discrete demand distribution. 
so there is a distinct uh, border between it, between each possible value uh, and this is realistic because we cannot have one and a half unit of demand for example but uh, in practice many businesses use continuous distributions Continuous distributions are easier to work with and we can substitute discrete distributions to continuous distributions when we have a lot of observations and we have wide range of possible values. Even so, this is actually discrete distribution we can still substitute it to continuous distribution. Why? Because continuous distributions are sometimes easier to work with. Statistics gives us some ready results for continuous distributions that are convenient to, to use in practice. So, in, in this example we substituted discrete demand distribution with continuous demand distribution this is another example of demand distribution and it's very popular not only in engineering but also science normal distribution happens when some mean value have a higher chance of happening than the others. So in this example, for example, uh, demands values between 5 and uh, 7, they have a higher chance of happening. Normal distribution is uh, very popular because in statistics we have some ready results to calculate ba based on this normal or Gaussian distribution. And uh, why it's used so often? Because many things happening in nature or in business, they approximately fit the normal distribution. So, using those probability distributions, we can help uh, businesses find uh, order size. Uh, in addition to normal and uniform distribution, uh, another popular distribution is exponential. So, there are other distributions in, in business uh, but uh, those three distributions are the most popular in practice because, because we can fit most of observations, most of observed demand neatly into those three distributions. Each of those distributions has uh, some parameter or parameters. So for normal distribution it's mean and standard deviation for uniform distribution it's minimum and maximum and for exponential it's only mean. So you can see here that observed values do not perfectly match those distributions. But we can still approximately fit them to those theoretical distributions. Programs like Excel can help easily make histograms and uh, using those histograms observing the plots of the frequencies we can decide which distribution and uh, corresponding parameter to use each uh, continuous distribution has those two, uh, two functions one is probability density 
function. It looks like the frequency distributions we saw previously. And another function is cumulative density function. So it, it uh, uh, accumulates uh, the probabilities over the range of values. You can see from the continuous distribution that uh, each separate value has nearly zero chance of happening. That's why working with continuous distributions we usually don't use exact values but we use ranges. For example, demand between 200 and 300 or 300 and 500 and so on. That's why it's convenient to uh, divide the range of possible values into some bins of units. In this case, 100 unit bins. So, in supply chain management, we often say demand higher than certain value or lower than some value or between uh, two values. And uh, those density functions are convenient to use in such cases. Now, using those distributions, uh, we can know from statistical results that uh, uh, some values would uh, lie within certain standard deviations from the mean. So for normal distribution, 68% of all observations would be within one standard deviation. And for two and three standard deviations from the mean, it's 95 and over 99. If our distribution is not normal, then uh, for other distributions, normally minimum 75% of all observed values are within two standard deviations and 89% and, and, uh, within three standard deviations. That's why knowing standard deviation is important. It can help us to calculate safety stock. What is the safety stock? Look at this example using normal distribution. So, black area is a chance of stock out, in this example 9%, and uh, the remaining shaded area is uh, 91%. This is a probability of being in stock. So, safety stock Stock is a difference between the mean and the actual order size. And uh, we can use ready statistical tables to find the safety factor. Safety factor helps us calculate safety stock. And uh, we can also use Excel functions to calculate this safety factor or Z value. Let's look at this example. If we have average demand of 500 units and standard deviation of uh, 100 units, then uh, if we want 85% of all orders satisfied, we just find this safety factor for 85% percent uh, service level which is approximately 1.04 and using it we can calculate safety stock safety stock is just the standard deviation multiplied by safety factor now we can easily find order size which is mean demand plus safety stock So, so far we discussed how to calculate order size based on target service level, 
but what about optimal service level which maximizes expected profit? In this case, solution is more complicated. We should use this ratio and this ratio is equal to stock out divided by the sum of stock out and overstock. In simple cases, stock out is uh, the cost of each unit of short shortage or being out of stock. It, it's equal to price mi minus unit cost, which is like profit per unit, plus shortage penalty. And in denominator, we put the same uh, unit uh, stock of uh, stock out, co cost of stock out, plus uh, units cost of overstock, which is equal to unit uh, cost plus, plus salvage value. Salvage value is a value we can still get from any overstock usually discounted uh, price. Using this ratio, we can calculate the optimal service level. For example, using those parameters given here, it's 69%. Uh, if we know service level, then we can find optimal order size using Excel formula for normal inverse. Service level is the probability of demand being equal or less than stock. That is the probability of being in stock. In practice, businesses especially retailers, often use fill rate instead of this stock-in probability. And it has different formula and the result would be different from uh, service level. And uh, we can calculate fill rate using Excel again. This looks complicated, but actually it's not that difficult if we already have ready parameters. In many cases, finding optimal service level and optimal order size is not possible. We don't have enough data or our data is not accurate. In such cases, we can use simulations. So, simulation is basically using some computer software to simulate or model some uh, inventory control case. And uh, we can use it to approximately find a good solution. Maybe this solution wouldn't be optimal, wouldn't be the best, but it could still give good results in real business. Why simulations are so popular and useful? Because using simulations we can approximately find the decision variable which would help maximize our objective function or profit and uh, another value of simulation is that we can try changing parameters and see how our results would be different so before making actual decision in real business it's much safer it's less riskier than uh, implementing some decision in real business which could uh, cost us a lot of money if we make mistake so instead of it we if we build a good model if we use simulation we can 
predict more accurately what could happen if parameters change or if we change our decision variable or, or order size. Also, we should know that in statistics a lot of things uh, accuracy depends on sample size. So, we should have enough observations, so our sample would be representative. This simulation was made using Excel. Of course, such simulation can be used only in basic, very simple cases. Uh, in more complex situations, specialized software or technical computing languages like Python, for example, should be used. So we can see here how the result would become less reliable if we have smaller sample size. And we can see how results change when we have a different salvage value or purchase cost. So you can see here if salvage value is equal to purchase cost, then uh, this is not realistic because uh, in such cases like uh, discounted price would be higher than purchase cost and uh, business would order infinite, infinite amount of stock. So such cases are not realistic and simulation shows that, that by giving the error for optimal order size. Let's summarize. Newswender model helps find order size when demand is uncertain. There are two possible targets in such cases. Service level or fill rate and uh, profit maximiza maximization. Profit maximization requires finding optimal order size and this is hard in real business because we often lack data. Software and simulations can help us make calculations easier and uh, model Newswender situations to get approximate results. I encourage all users to experiment to try what was discussed here using uh, software and uh, I rec recommend Excel for beginners. That's all. Thank you for listening.